Hey guys, good morning, Brad Krantz. Hey, I'm continuing today on looking at Patrick Donahoe's Heads I Win, Tails You Lose, and I'm just kind of pulling some thoughts out of there. He makes a lot of great points, uh, so I'm just going to share some thoughts that popped out to me, reflect on them, and offer them to you for further thought and consideration. You know, the book itself is awesome. If you're looking for great strategy for financial planning and wealth preservation, I think he's on the right track. But so much of what he talks about just hits, I call it, you know, it's where the rubber meets the road. It hits our everyday lives, what we do financially, what we do in our jobs and, and careers. And is it really working? You know, is the American dream really working or is the American system broken? I talked about that on Wednesday. But he offers just some really great points. So I want to share with share them. And they're really just kind of for your thought and reflection, and I'll wrap up with a, with a call to action here. You know, he starts off saying, financial education is what fundamentally separates the rich from the poor. Okay, and that we could diverge on that quite a bit, but that statement, but he qualifies that by saying the lack of it is why most people pay so much in taxes, why so many fall short of building wealth, and why so few are ever able to achieve financial freedom. Think about that. You know, lack of education, you know, it's not a panacea, but, you know, lack of education um, has its costs, has its consequences. So it's how much do we not know about finances? You know, why are the wealthy getting wealthy and staying wealthy? And why are the average Americans, middle class and such, not making it? Something to think about, okay? A little bit of a humorous quote here to shift quote gears. Mark Twain said that the two most important days in our life are the day that you're born and the day that you figure out why. And I just want to pose a question, what's your purpose? I, I think very few people have actually thought about, do they have a purpose for their life? And do they have a purpose for their job or career? But I want you to think about that. You know, purpose is very important. Do you know why you're here? Okay. Do you know what you're doing? Do you have a plan? Okay, think about that. Three statements that kind of tie together here next are, he says, establishing a healthy financial statement helps get us out of the rat race. Amazing, that word, rat race. Aren't most of us in the rat race? I was in the rat race, guys. I get it. Okay, been there 41 plus years. The fact of it is, and I talked about this Wednesday, is most people now with COVID-19 affecting them, companies and individuals are finding out that cash really is king. Okay, those that have cash are, are good. They're well off. Those that don't, they're they're hurting. And that's sad. You know, the job losses, uh, the layoffs, you know, major employers like Boeing. I just read Wall Street Journal today, like 700, some 10,000 uh you know, cutbacks in jobs this month. So that's got a, that's got a huge impact. But how do you get out of the rat race? Well, he says establishing a healthy human capital statement is really what sets you on the path toward true financial freedom. Now, that's not something that we hear too often. When he said that, I had to think about it. I'm still thinking about it. But here's how he defines that, is its relationships, its reputation, and your network are what he considers the most valuable assets of your human capital statement. Again, these are stuff we're not taught in school, and I, I dare say we probably don't hear much about them in our jobs or careers either. But your relationships, how important are those to you, especially right now? Okay, do you have a relationship with the Lord? Do you have close friends in that, people that can be there to help support you, to pray for you, all those type of things. But your reputation, Warren Buffett said it can take you 20 years to build a reputation and five minutes to lose it. How important is your reputation? Okay, are you a person of your word? Are you a person of integrity? And then your network. How many of us actually have a network? What the heck is a network? Okay, do you have a network of people that you can rely on and trust that are there to help you, that can mentor you? Okay, we're going to talk a little bit more about that later. But think about that. Our human capital statement, relationships, reputation, and network. Okay, not bank account, etc. You know, job, your income producing ability. It's it's those. Think about those. And he said that you can argue that it's just as difficult for a second generation wealthy person to maintain their wealth as it is for someone born in poverty to achieve wealth. So think about the huge disparity there. Okay. And a lot of it's lack, lack of education. He says, here's why it comes down to three fundamentals. We're going to talk about these real quick. Mindset, what people think they know and what people are open to learning. Okay. And mindset, he goes, if you have a fixed mindset, you think your intelligence and talents are fixed or a fixed trait that you have what you have and you feel you have enough success. And hey, if you're happy where you're at, if you're content in life, that's great. I'm not saying not to be content, but I think most of us, we can do more and be more than we really give ourselves credit for that we really try to achieve. But if your mindset is fixed, you're basically closed. You're, you're, you're not open to considering new ideas, possibilities, or concepts. Okay. 
than what people think they know. Okay, you don't see much point in trying to improve on your skills because you think you already know everything you need to know. Well, that gets you to a point, but how about now facing COVID-19 and all that? If, if you, you know what you think you know and you're not in a good situation now, maybe you don't know everything. Maybe you need to change. Okay, and I'm here just to pose that question for thought. Okay, so most of us, I think, think we know everything. Too many people think they know everything and we don't, guys. The last one, what they're open to learning. And here's where I think you can say growth takes place. Because if you have a growth mindset as opposed to a fixed mindset, you have a lot more humility. Okay, leaders are learners. Okay, guys, you believe you always have more to learn. Okay, and that your basic abilities can be developed and improved by working at them. Guys, that's where your growth and change is going to take place by having a growth mindset. Okay, and that's, I think, what we need now, especially in this time in our, in our economy. That's, that's, what it, uh, that's what it's going to take. And then realize the responsibilities on your shoulders, guys. I think in America, we've abrogated our responsibilities to, you know, other people, to our jobs, our employers, and a large part, the government. Okay, because it's your responsibility, it's on your shoulders. It's not the circumstances of the economy, or we could say with COVID-19 today, sorry. But our employer, our jobs, or the market, or interest rates, those things that impact the stock market, or some outside factor. Guys, we've got to take personal responsibility for our lives. He goes, and invest in yourself before you invest in anything else. Okay, so how do the wealthy think diff differently? Well, I think I've, I've talked about this before, but Robert Kiyosaki says the rich don't do things differently. They do the exact opposite. Ponder on that one. And it's first, he says, by building a network of those who prove themselves in business and investment. I'm going to call this mentorship. If you want to know more about it, join, join me tomorrow with my partner Val Campbell on the Saturday morning show. We're going to talk about mentorship. That's a concept that's all but lost or virtually unknown in the business and job world, I'll guarantee you, but mentorship. Build a network of those who've proven themselves in business and investment. They have the success. They know what they're doing. They know what they're talking about. Number two is by paying attention to the industry that you're in and the multiple ways it offered you know, you post-career opportunities. There's, there's a lot more opportunities, I think, than we keep our minds open to. Sometimes we shut ourselves off to that. That's what he's saying. So guys, thanks for joining me today, Friday. Um, as always, if you're looking, if you're open to talking about ways to uh, get out of the rat race, uh, please reach out. I'd love to talk to you about what I'm doing with Chinesque Global and the 3LE team. Uh, I would love to have a conversation with you. As always, if you got some value out of this, please feel free to hit the subscribe button. And you're always welcome to connect with me and follow me on social media at the links provided. Have an awesome Friday, guys. Bye-bye.